We are frequently asked about bonding and earthing and what is supplementary bonding. So, in this Learn Electrics video, we will look at this important safety subject. The sort of questions we are asked might include What is the difference between earthing and bonding? What is the difference between main bonding and supplementary bonding in a house? And how does bonding protect me? Earthing and bonding must be looked at as two different ways of making the customer safe from electric shocks. With earthing, we have the main earth and the CPCs that work in a similar way. Then, we have main bonding and supplementary bonding that perform their own special functions. Let's look at this. We should begin at the earth bar in the consumer unit. This is a common connection point for all the green and yellow conductors and CPCs. The earthing and bonding connections all meet at the main earth terminal. In this simple example, we have the main earth, which nowadays should be 16mm. And then one, two or more bonding conductors at 10mm to current regulations. The terminal holes in the earth bar will be especially larger to accommodate these three conductors. Then there will be several terminal holes for the CPCs or circuit protective conductors. All the earthing and main bonding meets at the earth bar as can be seen here. That just leaves supplementary bonding. Supplementary bonding is all done inside the bathroom in this example. It does not go back to the earth bar but instead relies on the CPCs of the bathroom circuits to do this for it. Earthing then is used to provide a low resistance path to earth during an earth fault so that the breaker will operate. The low resistance path means that a high current can flow and this high current will cause the operation of the circuit breaker or fuse. A typical domestic cocker circuit might have, say, 20 amps flowing through it in normal use and be protected by a 32 amp breaker. If the low resistance earth path was low enough, let's say around 0 0.25 ohms, then during a fault, maybe 800 amps flows through the breaker. Faced with 800 amps, a 32 amp breaker will trip almost instantaneously, making the circuit safe. Bonding, on the other hand, is used to reduce the risk of an electric shock to someone that might be touching two separate metallic parts when a fault develops on the installation. This could be the casings to two electrical items, the cooker and the metal kettle for example, or between an electrical item, the cooker, and the non-electrical item, let's say a water pipe, that has earth potential. In other words, it goes to earth. We call this earthy. By connecting them together, any voltage on one item will be matched on the second item. If they are both at the same voltage, there cannot be an electric shock. So let's look at the main earth first. The main earth is the principal earth conductor between the earth bar and the intake position. The earth bar is a common point for all the earthing and bonding to be joined together. There is only one conductor that is called earth in a property, and this is the earth conductor between the cutout box at the intake position and the consumer unit. And we can see the main earth in this photo. Different earthing systems have a different arrangement for where the main earth is taken from. In a TNCS system, as here, it comes from inside the cutout box, the plastic box that also houses the main fuse. With a TNS earthing system, the earth comes off before the cutout box. The main earth is soldered onto the lead sheathing just below the box, and then goes either directly to the consumer unit or to a local earth bar and then the consumer unit. A TT system is different entirely. There is no earth supplied by the distributor. The customer must supply their own main earth, usually from an earth rod near to the meter or an entrance door. Now look at CPCs or circuit protective conductors. They are still part of the earthing group but named differently. The CPC is often called the earth as in twin and earth cable. All these earths to all the individual circuits and points of use should properly be called CPCs. CPCs can be integrated in multi-core cable as in twin and earth or can be insulated singles. Together with the circuit's line conductor, 
the CPC makes up R1 plus R2 for each circuit. Circuit protective conductors, the CPCs, carry fault current from the individual circuits to the earth bar and then out of the property on the main earth. If there is sufficient fault current flowing, then the breaker or fuse will operate. Now look at main bonding and we will see a difference. In normal use, it is perfectly safe to touch an electrical accessory or appliance and a non-electrical part that is earthy at the same time. We do it often. We touch the cooker, touch the taps and so on. You must understand two important terms. Exposed conductive parts, because they have electricity in them, the cooker casing for example, or metal kettles, and extraneous conductive parts, because they do not have electricity in them, central heating radiators, water pipes, and so on. What is the danger then, if there is no bonding to water pipes, etc., where these have earth potential, earthy as we say. If a fault develops in the cooker, and the customer is also touching the water pipes, then they will have 230 volts on one hand, and zero volts on the other. There is 230 volts difference across their body. This means that electric current can flow from one hand to the other, across the chest and the heart, and the customer will get an electric shock. However, let us now bond the water pipe back to the earth bar in the consumer unit. Now, when the cooker develops a fault and the casing becomes live, the 230 volts will rush down the CPC for the cooker circuit. Then, it will travel along the bonding conductor to the water pipes, and all this happens in a tiny fraction of a second. What's happened now? The cooker is at 230 volts, and so are the water pipes. This means that both hands are at 230 volts. If both hands are at the same voltage, the voltage difference across the body is zero, and current cannot flow through the body. With no current flung across their body, the customer is safe. But there is more to it than this. We still have 230 volts on the cooker and the water pipes, so what happens next? Think about the main earth now. When the 230 volts arrives at the earth bar, as well as going to the water pipes, it also travels along the main earth back to the transformer. If the resistance path is low enough, then a massive fault current will flow along the main earth, let's say 800 amps. This causes 800 amps to flow along the line conductor and through the breaker. At 800 amps, the breaker or fuse will operate almost instantly. When the fuse or breaker operates, the fault current stops, and the voltage on the cooker and the bonding conductor falls to zero, and everything on that circuit is now zero, a safe condition, and the customer is safe. How does supplementary bonding work? We can look at that next. If the bathroom circuit is not 30 milliamp RCD protected, then supplementary bonding must be in place. Are there exposed conductive parts, like heated towel rails, and extraneous conductive parts, such as non-electric radiators in the bathroom? Usually, Yes. Exposed conductive parts are metal parts of electrical appliances, and extraneous conductive parts are metal parts of non-electrical items. A bathroom should have either 30 milliamp RCD protection or supplementary bonding. Both are methods of additional protection. All the non-electrical items in the bathroom shall be connected to all the electrical items. We are effectively connecting the extraneous conductive parts to the exposed conductive parts. The supplementary bonding in the picture is a slightly different colour to the CPC to help you to recognise it. If we look at how this happens inside the shower, it is simply a case of taking a supplementary bonding conductor into the shower casing and putting it into the earth terminal in the shower. With the supplementary bonding and the CPC joined together, that part of the bonding is complete. It's as easy as that and we can use the CPC for the lights, the shaver socket, heated towel rails, etc. Supplementary bonding uses the CPCs as its route back to the earth bar. In summary then, earth ink and CPCs carry the high fault current that will return on the line conductor and cause the fuse to blow or the breaker to trip. Main bonding during a fault causes the same voltage to appear on all metallic parts whilst we wait for the fuse to blow. Main bonding is connected to the earth bar. Supplementary bonding connects all the electrical metalwork in the bathroom 
to all the non-electrical metalwork and causes the same voltages to appear on all metalwork during a fault. Supplementary bonding uses the CPC of bathroom appliances for a path back to the earth bar. The supplementary bonding conductors do not leave the bathroom. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.